Hello, friend. Welcome back to the Bible Tract Echoes radio broadcast. I'm your host, Mike McCurry. Today, we close out a week of broadcast discussing and concluding the second ingredient of a good Christian. Last week, we talked about the spirit of agreement, the spirit of the amen. This week, we're talking about the spirit of the altar, the spirit of willingness to make adjustments. And we're going to jump right in because we have much to discuss. What is the altar? The altar is a place to start. The altar requires sacrifice. The altar is sanctified. The altar is not a sacrament. The altar is a place of substitution. God's altar must be solitary. You can't set up your own personal altars and God's altars at the same time. The altar can be a place of song. The altar is a place of significance. The altar is sustained and all of these different things. The altar is a special place, but today we're going to dive into some reasons why you might not be willing to make the adjustments necessary that are called for by the altar. You say, what are you talking about? Let's pause here for just a moment. Realize I'm not just talking about visiting the that old-fashioned altar at your local church and at the conclusion of the service if your pastor, if your man of God for your place says, maybe some of you need to come down to an altar and pray. I'm not really talking about that. I'm talking about the spiritual mindset that allows you to even say, you know what, God, I need to make some adjustments in my life. Here are some reasons why you might not be willing to make adjustments. Reasons why you won't use the altar. Let's begin with this. Because you are faultless. You say, hold up a moment. Uh, I'm not quite faultless, but we act like it sometimes, don't we? 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. Oftentimes in my life, we get a little bit of a holier-than-thou attitude, don't we? If I'm being honest, I'd say yes, I absolutely do. And friend, if you're being honest, you probably do as well. Romans chapter 3 and verse 10 says, As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Think about that. If you aren't perfect and I'm not perfect, then it's very likely we need to make some more adjustments in our heart and mind and life, don't we? Well, friend, if we're faultless or if we even just for a moment think, what have I done wrong? Then we won't make the necessary adjustments, will we? We won't visit the altar of our heart and pour ourselves out to God and say, all right, God, I'm sorry. I was wrong reasons why we won't make the adjustments, why we won't visit the altar because we are faultless, because we are faithless. Maybe, just maybe, maybe we're so down on ourselves and God that we don't think there's any worth in talking to him. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 13, if we believe not, yet he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. Friend, if you're a child of God, he will never leave you or forsake you. I'm so very glad that he can meet us even in a faithless state. Remember the apostle Peter, that that disciple, as he walked on the waves and then he began to sink beneath the waves? Jesus Christ reached out his hand. Even in Peter's lack of faith, he still clasped arms with him and said, Come on up, Peter stand back up here. And then he and Peter walked back to the boat. Think about that. When you think you're faultless, that's the best time to visit the altar. When you are faithless, oh, God will still meet you. 1 Corinthians 1, 9, God is faithful, by whom ye were called unto the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Even if you have lost faith, God hasn't. Maybe, though, it's not a faultless issue, faultlessness issue. Maybe it's not a faith issue. Maybe we're just forgetful. I tell you what, friend, 
one of the great crying shames of my generation is a lack of gratitude. And it's very difficult to be gracious and have gratitude when we forget all the good things that people have done for us, that God has done for us. Think about that. Are you forgetful when it comes to the necessity for adjustment? This memorial, if you want to think of it that way, this altar, it's more than just a place of sacrifice. We've talked about it being a place of adjustment, but this is a place to thank God for where you have been and what he's brought you through. We've already mentioned this week Noah, the children of Israel, and I could go on with many others that by God's grace and their gratitude, they set up altars as a remembrance, as a place of, if I can also say this, prompt remembrance. We'd be wise not to let too much time go by before we thank God for what he's done. Psalm 68, 19, blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us. Now back up here. Blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us with benefits, even the God of our salvation. Did you realize that that breath right there came from God Almighty? There's another one, another blessing of God who daily, who daily, who daily loadeth us with benefits. Psalm 103 verse 2, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Psalm 116, 12, what shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits toward me? Well, I would recommend if you want to render something to him, maybe a little graciousness, a little gratitude, a little remembrance for what he's done for you. Why is it that you're not willing to make adjustments on the altar? of your heart and of your mind, maybe because you're faithless. I I can be there too sometimes. Maybe it's because we're forgetful. Maybe it's because we think we're faultless. I hope none of those things are true, but maybe, and this would be horrible if this is true. I, I pray it's not, but if it is, then we certainly need to realize it and visit an altar. Maybe it's because we, because you are foolish. Maybe it's a disobedience issue, an unrepented heart. God is speaking and you are ignoring. Proverbs 29.1. I've mentioned this verse in the past, but I had a junior church preacher, a junior church teacher. I was 11 or 12 years old. Every other week, he taught junior church at our church there in, uh, let's see, it was the Fort Lee, Richmond, Virginia area of the country. He taught on this passage, or it came up just about, by my recollection, just about every service, every other week. Proverbs 29.1. He, that being often reproved, hardeneth his neck, shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. You know what annoys me? more than one of my daughters saying no to me when I tell her something? You say, your daughters, your precious daughters, those cute girls, they disobey sometimes? You better believe it. They were born in sin. They were born with sin in their hearts. But thankfully, the law of God was written in their hearts as well. And once they reach an age of understanding and they, Lord willing, I'm already praying for their salvation. But can I tell you, friends, Sometimes my daughters don't just say no. And of course, we deal with that. And there's discipline as necessary. But you know what annoys me more than that? Is when I know they can hear me and they ignore me. You say they would do that. Those precious angels. Of course they would. Now, realize they're preacher's kids. They're going to be in illustrations for the rest of their life, probably. But thankfully, we're working through some of these things, and they're doing a, such a great job of obeying. They, they, honestly, they're, they're learning and realizing how much of a sinner I was. They've got a lot, of work, a lot to work through genetically coming from their dad's side. But realize this, how sad is it? for you and for me as children of God, not just to in bold faced rebellion, shake our fist at God and say, no, God, I'm not doing what you want. But how much more insidious, how much more rebellious is it to hear him speaking 
and to ignore him. What does God feel like when you foolishly ignore him? It's likely if you're listening to a good radio station right now, you probably hear good preacher after good preacher after good speaker after good speaker, people much more accomplished than me, talking to you from this blessed old book that I hold in my hand. It's true, the song says, from beginning to end. And they talk to you from this Bible, and God pricks your heart about a place that you need to adjust, a place that you need to look at. You know what you should do with the altar? You should consider starting there. You should realize it's a place of sacrifice. Realize that it's sanctified. It's a special place. It's not just a sacrament or a ritual. It's a place of substitution. Praise God that he substituted himself for us. Maybe, just maybe, God's altar is not solitary in your life. Maybe you need to remember it's a place of song and significance. Maybe you need to do some extra work to sustain the altar, the spirit of adjustment in your life. Maybe something I've touched on today. Maybe sometimes we think we're a little too faultless. Maybe we're forgetful, faithless. Maybe we're just plain foolish sometimes. I am all of those things more often than than I'd like to admit. We've looked at two ingredients the past two weeks. Next week, though, we present the third and, for now, final ingredient. I want to thank you for being a part of this broadcast. I want to thank you for being a part of our listening family. Realize that we need to agree with what God's Bible says, with what his word says. We need to be willing to make adjustments based off of what God's word says as well. I greatly appreciate the fact that you have partnered with us in this small way of listening today. If there's anything I can do for you, I'd love for you to reach out. You can contact me at this phone number. Text me at 309 Three, one, six, seven, two, four, zero. We have listeners all the time take advantage of that. The announcer will be on in just a moment to tell you more about how you can contact us. Let me personally invite you one more time to our grand opening on Saturday, October 1st in Odell, Illinois at Bible Tracks Incorporated. Thank you so much for being a part of our broadcast. I'm going to encourage you to join us next week. We want to be good Christians, don't we? Well, we're going to look at the third and final ingredient. We've looked at the spirit of agreement, the amen, the spirit of adjustment, the altar. And next week, I won't let the cat out of the bag. We're going to look at the third ingredient of a good Christian. Have a great day for his glory and God bless.